Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, today I thought what I would do is a tribute to John Paul Leon. Uh, I mean, it was huge, huge outpouring of condolences and sorrow and sadness that he passed away. Um, I held back on really talking about it just because out of respect to people that are actually close to him. Um, I've never met John. I've only been a fan just as a fan would be, you know what I mean? So um, I just I kind of gave a few days to let things settle down. But I, you know, I mean, I do this channel. We look at a lot of art and artists and stuff like that. And although this is... 100% not the way that I would ever want to do a video on someone. Um, I think it's worth taking a look at his work. He's always blown me away. I mean, I remember first seeing his work um, when he was doing stuff from Milestone. And, um, you know, so really since I've been collecting, I've kind of been aware of his work. And uh, there's definitely been times where I'm like, man, this guy holds a lot of answers and things that might help me draw better. So... This will be a fun celebration of his work and of his life and efforts. And then what I thought I would do is um, I always try to link to people's social media and whatnot. Um, but they are doing um, a fundraiser in his honor. And uh, I'm going to link to that and also his official website. So um, definitely check it out. And uh, yeah, this is kind of bittersweet. I have a lot of art that we can look at, though, today. It should be very fun. Most of the stuff is from his official website. So um, yeah, settle back in and, uh, you know, let's, let's look at some art and we can discuss it and have some fun. And uh, it should be cool. So yeah, this is solid. It's it's interesting. So some of these are commissions. Some of these, this is clearly a commission. It says format. Um, I have uh, interior pages from books and covers and all kinds of things. So we're going to cover a lot of ground. This is solid though. I mean, and this is to me, this is always really um, a defining. Um, uh, what would you call it? Like example of of how I can tell when an artist can draw. Um, when you see someone sketch, truly sketch you know, not something that they're presenting as, as a sketch that is um, put together in different ways. Um, you know, you really you really see the structure and how they think about form and stuff like that. And this is all really, really solid. And honestly, a very, very good way to practice drawing, um, which is, is learn these pieces and putting things together and these simple shapes and uh, be able to move that around. And everything else kind of will fall into place within that. Um, so, yes, this is really, really nice. It's, this is going to be very, very educational for me. Um, I haven't done a deep dive on his stuff in a long time. It's funny, too, is is um, I have black and white photocopies somewhere of a bunch of his work. When he was working for Wildstorm, um, or, or somehow through Wildstorm, um, I had access to... to um, just black and white versions of his work and i just always found it so impressive and interesting and and i talked about this in the heavy metal video like like i've i talk about like that i'm always really really impressed when people can draw very well and it's like you know someone being like a master musician where you just go god man they're they not only play but they really really are connected to the art and do it at such a high level and this to me is like adult art like like uh his thought process and stuff like that is very advanced and very mature. Um, and, and he really can control the level of detail that he wants to put in. I mean, you can see how casually um, the background is, but it actually works really well. It's a, it's a tricky balance when you're learning to draw to be able to teeter back and forth between something that is rock solid and then things that are more abstract or surreal or, you know, loose and kind of more spontaneous. Um, it's a real tricky blend to uh, do. Now, this is the stuff that I always was like, whoa, 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 whoa. How in the world do you draw pages like this? I can't even get a pencil line this thick, let alone <laughs> draw anywhere in this galaxy of like quality. But yeah, it was, it was always funny. I'm like, like, what kind of pencil do these guys use? Um, it's hard for me not to think of Tommy Lee Edwards when I think of John Paul Leone. I kind of discovered him probably right at the same time. And uh, they both work for Milestone, if I'm not mistaken. And um, there was just similarities to their stuff that, that um, 
you know, um, I mean, you could see where they were were definitely coming at comics from um, sort of a similar headspace. Man, this is good. Holy shit. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> kind of floored on this one. This is a crazy page. God dang. Wow. That is just crazy. It might have been Winterman that I'm thinking of um, that I, I was able to get some copies of. But you, I mean, you can see very, very clearly like how he draws here. His stuff is so bold and black and white. Um, you know. It's, it's actually quite clear, even when you don't have the highest of the high-res scans. This is all really, really cool. Man, this is badass. Coming up through Wildstorm with Lee Bermejo, Lee and I, and I'm sure other artists there too, but uh, Lee and I both were big fans of this type of stuff. I don't draw as... Um, bold is this but i have always loved really graphic art i think there's just there's something compositionally about it that makes it very strong and and um it, it's just it works it really really works well <clears throat> this is cool this is really nice too god dang man that is nice but yeah, the outpouring online was like pretty overwhelming. I just, it was cool to see everybody giving him shout outs. But I just, I kind of think that those people really knew him or had met him at shows and stuff like that. So. Or worked with him, you know, like lots of editors and people like that. Whoa, sexy times here. This is nice. At times, there's like little bits and pieces of this stuff that remind me a little bit of Zafino, but like tame Zafino, like where where Zafino gets very almost like feral with his art. Um, John seems to be more, um, I wouldn't call it Tothian, <laughs> but uh, like it's a more controlled line. It's more um, uh, like thoughtful and accurate, but uh, that's harder to do, to be quite honest, you know. I, I kind of recommend to people when you're learning to draw in particular is like like anything that's complex if you can boil it down to two or three shapes that can indicate that form I think it's a great idea and you you'll see these repetitive patterns of threes and twos and is and even in John's work with with someone that draws in a very advanced way but it's like he indicates like three folds here he's got three little things here you know if there's a crease on a sleeve it's generally like one very nicely placed line like here with her sweater or whatever she's wearing you know what i mean he doesn't really go overboard with it the detail is the quantity of things that he draws but the quality of the shapes is incredibly important like him showing this right here with like one nice stroke you know um and when you can when you can do that well then you can start to amplify that and and put in more shapes but you know again these are like fan perspectives i would call it more than um i don't consider myself a drawing peer to someone at this level i'm just a i'm kind of a newbie so you know i haven't even been drawing penciling for a year yet so i'm still i'm like in the trenches just getting my ass kicked every day <laughs> The robot's like, it's okay, Rich. You just got to push forward. In a few years, you will be m more comfortable with all of this. Zorro. This is nice. This I this background is great, too. I love the contrast of the very bold, um, you know, like more detailed drawing. And these line drawings are great. Whew, man, that's good. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, wow, that's really, really cool. Fun fun idea, too. I've seen tons and tons of pieces done like this. It's really, really nice. That's cool, man. Gosh. Wow, that is so nice. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if you can see the cursor. Let me just do one thing really quick. I'll grab color here so I can um, point. Because sometimes... Like, I'm on a 28-inch Cintiq or something like that right now. And so I can see my cursor, but... Oh, these are grayscale? Or this is grayscale? Hold on, let me see. Sorry, one second. 
yeah, this is a grayscale fall. They're not all grayscale though, but uh, this is what I was talking about right here. This area right here. These are great, great little figures. I mean, the whole thing is great, but this right here, these poses are just so cool. And again, I mean, do you see like, like the temptation might've been there to go in and add lots of, you know, folds and, and creases and stuff like that. But he fights the urge to do it um because it doesn't really need to be there again it's it's i've always found john's work actually to be like almost overwhelmingly detailed like stuff like this i remember when lee bermejo was drawing batman death blow i think some of the batman death blow stuff i mean it was very very similar to this it's incredibly dense art and just everything is getting you know a thousand dollars worth of attention um, wow this is actually lettered on the board it looks to be that's pretty cool this is great man it's so cool but yeah this is no joke it's really cool too he he really understands his language uh, meaning that that like any iconography that he puts in his stuff is 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 fits in the world i don't i'm never there's never anything jarring, meaning like, like, uh, although this stuff at times almost looks photorealistic in a very graphic way, um, it always looks pretty much like he draws it, you know? It's, it's really interesting. When you learn to draw this way, um, like, like Lee Bermejo is someone that I know is, I personally kind of saw him evolve into, to what he does. Um, it really is incredible what you can do that that almost looks like it's from a photo but these guys understand what they pulled from reference and they're able to do it like out of their head and it's just really really awesome to see again you can see like two folds three folds you know there's five in that whole area but this is a what we like call like a tension point and these are like um you know kind of stretching with the fabric same here you know he's really really on it with that so learn your simple shapes. If you can place them accurately, you're gonna do okay. Oh man, look at this. There was an artist, Tony Salmons, um, was working for Wildstorm for a brief time and I got to meet him a few times. Really interesting artist if you don't know his work. He's very good, he's like an artist artist. People that, that that know Tony's work uh, generally really respect it, but he's not like a household name, like um, you know, like a more mainstream artist. But uh, Tony got gave me photocopies of this book that he loved. Um, gosh, it was like an Italian artist, but it's not like Topi or one of those guys. It was um, man, what was it called? Reminds me a little bit of some of this stuff. But he was way into it. I remember him going like, "This is like the best shit ever." It was a little over my head at the time, to be quite honest. I was still into like what I would consider more commercial aesthetic and stuff like that. So, Toth, like I, I still, as much as I appreciate Toth, it's, it's, it's. I don't. It's not exactly the look that I'm like super, you know, into. This is really great, but I like a lot of stuff that people would assume is influenced by Toth. It's an interesting thing. My favorite Toth book is there's a design book that they did. Aaron Weisenfeld used to have it. I never I never picked it up. I, I would have got it, but uh, I really like that one. But it was like all... Gosh, I wish I could remember the name. It was something about design. Like, the, the, like cartoon. It was like cartoon characters that he had designed and stuff like that. Really, really good book, though. But, man, I love that. This is great. John Workman letters. I, I love John Workman's letters. Wow. Damn. This guy is so crazy. That's really cool. Times I almost get like, like, the, like, the, I think it's more just a coincidence. Like a little David Mazzicelli, you know? And even sometimes John Romina Jr. Again, I think it's just more incidental. But uh, there's errors of John Romina Jr. where it's like like it's that weird 
there's that hybrid of like it's kind of Frank Miller. There's like some Will Eisner. There's some Toth. It's it's like all these kind of cool influences kind of trickled through um, a certain movement of artists, and uh, it's always really really good stuff. We're all children of like these different like lineages and like family trees. It's pretty pretty cool. Was I mean, this is a little tiny bit of a sidebar. I'll keep it short. But when I was walking today, I was trying to think back of like my first couple of like what I would consider art influences, and uh, I boiled it down to like four artists. It was a uh, Dr. Seuss. Whoa. Oh, what's that? Oh, sorry. Pencil. I thought uh, it sounded like a drink spilled. I was Dr. Seuss, Shel Silverstein, Charles Schultz. And oh, there was one more. Who was it? But uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting how if you go back far enough, you can see like what kind of sparked like your early drawings. I actually really liked, I had a Jack Ham cartooning book as a little, little kid. Um, and I really loved that. And then then my my first, what I would consider adult drawing book was, uh, uh, it's the Star Wars sketchbook. It's Joe Johnston's work. It's like blue. I think it's got a blue cover. Um, you can still find them on eBay. It's I thought it was a how to draw Star Wars book, but uh, man, I love that thing. But anyway, so Coca Cola. Yeah, this is very very cool. On John's site too, he has a process section where you can see his thumbnails and stuff like that. They're pretty interesting. His website is definitely worth going through. There's a lot of art, hundreds and several hundred pieces. So um. You know, definitely check it out. This is nice. Yeah, they're so crazy. This, is, this almost looks like a turntable. I'm like, what is this? Like, oh, it's like a hot plate. <laughs> is this a record store? What is that? Yeah, so so I remember when I was like when I would go and I would like check out John's stuff and I was trying to see what I could maybe learn from it that I could put into my art. And this stuff always baffled me is like how thick all the lines were, like on the folds and stuff like that. I pictured like a pencil that was like almost like, you know, when you sharpen it with like a knife and you kind of chisel off it so you can actually do like a line that's like kind of like that shape. Or, you know, if you turn it a certain angle, um, you know, it can like that's sort of what the tip of the pencil ends up looking like. It's got like different edges and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I because I, I would always use like a drafting pencil and sharpen it. And I was like, I can't even get lines that look like this, let alone, you know, draw anywhere near it. But uh, oh, this is nice. Man, that's really cool. I'm always impressed by people that draw stretchers and the wheels and stuff like that really good. You'll see it in comics or like you know, someone like sprawled out on like a, you know, a gurney or something and, and like a big sci tech lab. Stuart Immerman, I saw there was, and I think it was all new X Men did like one sequence with, a, I think it was Beast on a table, something like that. Oh my God. So good. I love stuff like this too, where he's got objects in the scene that are turned so like not everything is going to the vanishing point that is actually a good takeaway for young artists is you don't you don't have to have everything that you draw go to like one vanishing point when you turn things and keep your horizon line consistent uh, it's interesting so he's got like this machine is at a different angle this box is at a different angle these are going so you can have a vanishing point for everything it just needs to all fall on the same horizon line meaning that the planes are a certain thing so he does that well. I've noticed that a lot. Mignola does it too in his own way. I've been checking out a lot of Mignola stuff, and Mike Mike will do it, even though he he curves a lot of his lines. Um, you know, he'll juxtapose shapes um, that way. This is really cool. Man. This is really really nice. So I haven't noticed, but I I oh sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um. When you do graphic styles, one one little thing that, that you'll see artists do is any back leg a lot of times will be blacked out. You see, blacked out, blacked out, blacked out. Um, 
it works well. This leg is behind. It's blacked out. It's like a little. I don't know if it's like a conscious decision that that artists make, but um, it it looks good to be honest, and it's a little easier to draw. So it's kind of a double win to be honest. It's not really a laziness thing as much as it just looks better. This is nice. Tricky roof. <laughs> This is great too. Wow, geez Louise. Oh my gosh. This is really nice. This says this page reminds me a little of Bill Sienkiewicz at times. There's a little bit of a Sienkiewicz vibe to this, which you don't see a lot in John's work, to be honest. The thinner lines and stuff like that. It would, you know, what I, I have to say, it would have actually been quite interesting to see Bill Sienkiewicz ink like a short story over John. I think they would, they would have a really, really interesting style. It's kind of like, um, I love, love, love the um, Bill Sienkiewicz, John Buscema, um, Wolverine issues. Oh man, this is awesome. God damn, seriously, whoo, that is really, really cool. Um, but if you get the Marvel Essentials, Wolverine Essentials, the black and whites, um, they're even better. But yeah, those those Sienkiewicz inked um, John Buscema issues are really, really fun. It's different, you know what I mean? It's, you have to go into it understand that. So it looks like we're getting into some of his Marvel work, so this will be fun. I don't, I don't know how on order it will go, but uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, these thick lines, man, that is like, just whew. Spider-Man pose is really, really good too. God, his, uh, he's so solid with his figures, but this is great, man. And it's those same exact shapes that I pointed out in the very first, I think it was the first piece when I was talking about, it was the Daredevil. Um, you can see those same exact forms here. He's got them so locked in. He's just able to move this, you know, quote unquote mannequin around. Um, it really, really looks good. Oh man, this is great too. God dang. So I'm assuming this is the shadow. Yeah. So. I didn't see the bottom. I was focused on this and then just tripping out on the buildings. Man, it's crazy. It looks so cool. I've never, I don't know if I've ever been to a city. I mean, downtown San Diego has some stuff like this a little bit, but never been to well i have been of these cities but not really through them like with any fine tooth comb because that actually isn't true so i did travel over the country in my band but we were only there to play shows and then leave so this is cool yeah it would be fun to like live in a city like new york or pittsburgh or something like that and go around and just like shoot photos of all the crazy buildings stuff like this this might be for Koypel. i not necessarily but I don't know if Koypel's a big Punisher fan. Could just be at the name. That's cool. Nice gun. Little dash of splatter. Works nice. Looks good. Let me I'm gonna check my phone just for one second. It was beeping, I just wanna see what it was. No, it's nothing. Alright. We got Loot Cage Iron Fist. Wow. Heroes for hire. I love this. Man, this looks cool. Yeah, that looks really neat. I like I like how some of the windows are darker, like the marker bled over. Or it's like the use. I can't tell if it's a little tiny bit of wash or just a dried out marker. It might be just dried out marker, but it's a nice effect. And then some of the windows have a little bit more of a hot white in it. Dude, seriously, like his lines are so beefy. It's crazy. I'm telling you, this is man's art. <laughs> Not for kids. It's like like I said, it just feels like it always felt like very mature. This does <coughs> excuse me, have a little bit of a Safino vibe. Or Topi. Like, oh no. Nah. Well, I don't know. Like I think if that's more just a coincidence. Really, really nice. God man. Kelsey and I talk about this where there's like sometimes people will do a singular piece and you just go like that's the style. That's that's this is what I want my stuff to look like, you know. But someone like John Paul Leon just touches on it in like one piece and sort of moves along. 
but yeah, this is this is one of those to me where I go like, there's a lot I could get out of this. This is like Frank Miller, but it's a little more detailed. I mean, it's clearly all John Paul Leone. I'm just saying that like, you know, if you're painting in broad strokes, it's someone like learning. It's got a little bit of a design sense. It's kind of pretty, you know, but rough also. That's a delicate balance too, to be quite honest, is having art that's kind of rough and still having a level of um, prettiness that appeals to to uh, people that uh, are scared of rough art because they're out there <laughs> you don't believe me post a lot of rough art and see this is cool see this on a drum head man that is great that is really really nice I always had this fantasy because most of you guys know I'm a huge music fan I always wanted to do a series of like large oil paintings of um famous blues and jazz musicians i've never actually said that publicly but it is actually true um but yeah like like large just kick-ass oil paintings hopefully someday i will do it this is cool he would have he would have been a great painter i know tommy lee edwards went into um almost like a struzan-esque type style and was doing a lot of illustrated books for a while um there's no doubt when you understand planes like this guy, meaning like these, he indicates form with these large shapes. Um, that's a real nice part of painting, um, as opposed to like with art, with comic art, we think linearly, meaning that like it's lines, you know, like you render a face and stuff like that. That is value, but but sometimes it might not transfer mentally for some people as easily as. Um, swatches of value this way it, it's, it's slightly closer ah, a lot of people are sharing this piece online it's great love the angle of the foot here it's really really cool coming at you this is great and you know look i mean as someone who uses a lot of black in my stuff um ideas like this like is the foot suggested enough that you don't need to hit this with white you know, to some extent, that's a tacky line, but you get the point. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, if you lay this stuff out properly, it will read. I mean, cause like, even for me, I mean, uh, granted the, um, I can see the ear in the actual drawing, but like if I darken it just for that sake, you still sense the other ear there, you know, you still read this as a leg. Like he was able to indicate just enough in the placement of the, and the angle of the foot and stuff like that you don't lose it but you know a poorly laid out version of this piece might have problems this is great this little area right here is actually very interesting to me i like these little streaks of white that are going up here and even in here it looks a little like he might have used a blade yeah he did so and and i'll point this out because people ask me about it because i showed razor blades in my um uh supplies that i'm using now for my own work um uh, not on crystal planet on on uh, blaster kit um this is kind of the look that you get now i don't know honestly what the old school guys were using but for some reason they could get bigger dots like when they would throw a line um it really gave almost like it was a wide wide shot and i still have never really found an exact tool that can get they, they can tear the page and get you you know what it is kitty well tell me because it would be interesting to know it's a little too much for the stuff that i do but um yeah most blades now get a very very thin rip not not the thick one this is great i kind of got to watch the clock here because i i gotta run to the post office and do some stuff busy day ah this is cool well very very inspiring um and boy, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of educational value that you can get out of this guy's stuff. It's interesting. So this piece has a little, like, it's it's very different than the one in the forest that I was talking about. But there was a vibe that I was getting from that piece that I'm also getting from this. And I'm going to, I'll write it down for you. This is what I'm seeing in those pieces. Is a little climped. It's, it's kind of buried in the mix. But I'm getting climped vibes. I get it on this too. Which, again, kind of goes back to Sienkiewicz. Sienkiewicz is definitely a big Klimt fan. Oh, this is nice. I, I'm assuming this is that other piece? It's different, though. It doesn't have... I, 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 I think this is the same pose. 
The other one had like a little bit of like kind of washy stuff on it, but uh, yeah, he maybe repurposed the pose. Or this is at Seattle Con. Hmm. I'd have to go back and look. I swear this is pretty much identical to that other one. Hmm. It's interesting. This is cool. I like this. Yeah, this is really really nice, man. Oh, I like that too. Tim Sale vibes, right? <laughs> I actually, we should do a Tim Sale video. Tim's actually really nice. I met him somewhere and was able to talk to him uh, kind of uninterrupted for a little while. And it was really, really interesting. He was a very, very nice guy. Yeah, I can't remember what the circumstances were. It was, it was real weird because I don't really know him. Somewhere I was able to like actually chat with him for for longer than you would normally talk to someone, you know, like at a con. I can't remember what it was though. This is cool too. Oh wow, look at this! Dang. I don't know if I if if I just saw this, I'm not 100 percent sure that I would realize it's John Paul Leon. I think there's little some Leon vibes in here, this area a bit more right in here. But uh, yeah, it's really interesting, man. God, if he did this at a show, holy cow. You're like, I'll come back in like an hour and we'll see how you're doing on the commission. And you come back and he's got this like for you. <laughs> you're like, oh my God. These could be done at home, I'm not sure. Wow, look at that. Jeez. That is really, really neat. I love this. Man. He did a great job with that. Oh, that's so fun. 2015. Oh, yeah. This is nice, too. DMZ. Wow. Holy cow. Gosh, I've never seen this. That is scary. Dude, now this is a Batman story I would read. This looks super, super creepy. Damn, how did I not see this? I would want it in black and white. I'm going to be selfish and say that I'm sure the colors are amazing, but I don't know. This in black and white looks like some good stuff. This is nice. Sexy ladies. Here we go. What time is it? I gotta watch the clock. Like I said, I gotta get to the post office before a certain time. Okay, we'll go five more minutes. Ooh, this is cool. Damn. I he I remember him drawing big robots and being like, dude, I cannot even understand what this guy is up to. The heavy lines just are so chunky. Oh, God, look at that. I remember this stuff. Yeah, this is wild. This looks like Wolfenstein video game. I think that was the last game that I played was one of the Wolfenstein games. It was fun. I was running around this big mountain that had, like, a big Nazi hangar in it. And I was trying to go through offices and do stuff, and I kept getting killed. <laughs> It looked great, though, I have to say. It was it, I was like, man, this is good stuff. Oh, this is so cool. That's a big, big structure. Oh, man, I love these kind of gates and stuff like this. This is cool, man. Woo. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Man, this guy draws good. Ah, it was brutal. It was actually it was it was hard to read everyone's stories about him. Everyone was saying how he was such a nice guy and stuff like that. Regret that I never got to meet him, but just you know, it's like different orbit. Where I would get lucky is sometimes people would come through Wildstorm, you know, like visit visit someone else, and they would get like a little tour, and you would get to meet, you know, someone.
This is nice. So I'm not real knowledgeable on Joe Kubert stuff. Does this stuff have a Kubert vibe, or is it just coincidental? Like, like just it's it's that kind of art, or or would you say that Joe Kubert would be somewhat of an influence on this work? Actually, it's it's funny because I was watching an interview with an artist and and. I kept thinking, I was like, man, this stuff looks like Joe Kubert to me. And I'm like, I need to get into Joe Kubert stuff. This is really cool. God, man, this is a great drawing. Jeez Louise. I think I saw this online in black and white. In fact, let's try this. Um, let me do this really quick. I'm going to try to make sure the blacks are black. All right, let's see. I want to see how light we can get this. Um. This is tough because it's off of it's off of a scan of like newsprint, and so it's gonna be tricky. But let me try to do one more level of gray. Let's see if I can. If it's a like digital, like well, yes, it's too much. All right, let's see what we got here. I kind of wanted to see in black and white or close to it. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. This this middle panel is incredible. God, man, love the shot. God, he drew so much stuff too. The fact that he pencils and inks this too, I'm I'm wondering how tight his pencils were. I should actually I need to look at those process things. So I'm kind of curious of them. Like how tight do you take the pencils if you're going to ink yourself? It's, it's an interesting um, challenge. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to go too loose with the pencils where your drawings suffer because you don't know how to ink it like like a one done like decision making process. But when you draw as good as this guy. I could. I have seen his pencils before, though. I feel like I have. Okay. Ooh, nice plane. Bam. Okay. So look in the description box for the link to the memorial fund that they're doing, like fundraiser. You can check that out. And then, um,. For sure, check out his website. There's tons and tons of great art that he shared. And uh, yeah, I mean, what what's that, kitty? Oh, you're in the sunshine? My cat likes to tell me that, that she's doing stuff. So, But uh, yeah, and so hopefully that this is was fun to look at and kind of, you know, will inspire you to draw a little bit more. I mean, I think ultimately, just as someone that does art, if you kind of think of like what your legacy is, you know, like, like, what would be a great thing to remember me by is if you, ins if you left the planet and you inspired other people to do art, I'm kind of getting choked up talking about this. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I think that, that that's like ultimately what probably most artists really want. I mean, you obviously want people to like your stuff, but I mean, the fact that you can have other people sort of draw because they l saw your stuff and that got them excited about drawing, you kind of feel like you carry on. So, both will carry on. Man, this is great. Jeez. I think we'll just end it on this one. This is a great piece. So, all right, you guys have a great day, and uh, I do love you all, and uh, I hope that everyone, you know, enjoys the day and draws and, and uh, had some fun looking at John Paul Leon art, and uh, please check out those links and consider, you know, supporting the fundraisers and uh yeah i will talk to you guys all very soon i'm planning on doing a couple more videos this week so if you have any recommendations i'd like to do some more hot takes so those are shorter 10 to 15 minute videos where we look at one individual comic and kind of break it apart so if you have a comic that you'd like to see me do let me know because uh i you know sometimes i feel like it's it's like it's funner to be surprised like even myself where it's like someone goes oh you should check out blah 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 and i'm like oh you know what i would have never thought of that that's a good idea so all right i'll talk to you guys later have a great day i go to the post office all right bye